The push for unity in a divided world. Thanks for joining us for this special Faith Nation. In Washington, I'm Jenna Browder. In a city that helped bring about a renewed push for racial justice, one woman is stepping up to help restore unity in a community divided. John Jessup introduces us to the historic leader in Missouri who's mixing the spiritual and the political to help rebuild the city of Ferguson. During the unrest of 2014, the Ferguson Police Department symbolized the anger and frustration with what was seen as heavy-handed policing, not just here locally, but on the national level as well. While the city has acknowledged its past failures and is making changes to become more community-oriented, a few blocks away, other changes are being made. Hello, Barbara. This is Mayor Ella Jones. Ella Jones spends long hours in City Hall and racks up a lot of mileage outside these walls, both in her pickup or on her feet. Behind her approachability lies an analytical mind, a trained chemist with a clear sense of style solidified as a sales director for Mary Kay. Then her career path took a turn in 2014. Was Michael Brown's death part of the reason why you decided to run for office? It was the only reason. First elected to city council, then in 2020, History tonight in Ferguson as the city's first black and first female mayor was sworn in. She took the helm as the city's top elected official, promising to move Ferguson forward after the uproar over the fatal police shooting of Brown, an unarmed black teen, a reality she compares to being in a pressure cooker. If you put that top on that pressure cooker and it's not fastened the way it's supposed to, and when that heat hit it, it's going to splatter. And you cannot put all of that back in the pot. And it takes you time to clean the mess up that's on the wall. The same analogy. We're still working on it. In an already tense situation, we reported on the ground in Ferguson when the city erupted in chaos and traveled back this past summer to track the progress. At King of Soul restaurant, you get the sense of coming home. The family-owned business opened during the height of the pandemic in 2020. Minus the bad publicity, Ferguson is thriving. Not only do we own two businesses in Ferguson, my children go to school up the street in Ferguson, so great place to live, great place to own a business. Smiles and laughter here now replace the rioting. Still, there are permanent reminders of the pain. This bronze plaque replaced the makeshift memorial for Michael Brown at the site where he drew his last breath. His death didn't just spark national protests and leave a community outraged and grief-stricken. It served as a wake-up call for the nation to have difficult and necessary conversations and served as a call to action for both the city of Ferguson and the family of Mike Brown. We spoke with Mike Brown Sr. during the city's unity celebration. While he still mourns his son, Brown appreciates the attempt to rebuild community. It plays a part on both sides. It's the community and the, and the, uh, the, part, the police department, you know. Uh, somebody gonna have to meet in the middle, you know, but we got to start somewhere. For the past nine years, the police departments teamed up with businesses and volunteers to fry food and give away free backpacks to local kids at the start of the school year. And families line up for food, fun, fellowship. Father, that everyone here realize that this is for unity together and not apart and faith with prayer tents to offer spiritual support for parents and their kids. The mayor came up with the idea in the wake of Brown's death and protests. As an AME church pastor, she tells CBN News she doesn't mind fusing politics with a little bit of faith. When I first took the seat back in 2015, I said, I don't know anything about government, but I know how to pastor people and I start doing pastoral care. Area churches see and feel a spiritual significance in the message of Unity Weekend. You know, heaven's every race, tribe, color, and tongue. And if we can't get along here, heaven's gonna be harder. <laughs> you know, and so this is heaven practice. We're, we're trying to do now what's going to happen for eternity in heaven. After winning a second term this year, 
Jones plans to lean on her pastoral skills as she listens and visits her constituents, young and old alike. The mayor says she's also picked up a few valuable political lessons. In this business, I've learned you don't have any permanent en enemies, no permanent friends, just permanent interests. Mm. And if you could just work on the interests and leave all the emotions and all of the pettiness out of it and work on the interests of the people, you'd be successful at what you do. As part of the new leadership reflecting the city's 70% black population, Mayor Jones says she's proud to have helped create Ferguson's first ever comprehensive plan and pledges to resolve issues with the city's police department by next year. About a decade later, some businesses have rebuilt. Others, like King of Soul Restaurant, are investing in the future of Ferguson with new shops. Still others never reopen, and that includes the quick trip that burned down at the site behind me. In its place, the Ferguson Community Empowerment Center, which houses the Urban League and the Salvation Army, where instead of filling up on gas, the goal is to fuel hope with practical ways of helping families and the community heal, grow, and thrive. In Ferguson, Missouri, I'm John Jessup, CBN News. Thank you, John. Jewish and Christian groups join forces to keep Israelis safe. That story and more next on Faith Nation. Welcome back. Jewish and Christian groups are joining forces in Israel following the war with Hamas. As Julie Stahl reports, their aim is clear. Unite together to help Israelis rebuild. These children are having fun peacefully at a special event organized in Jerusalem after they were evacuated from southern Israel. These moms, Ortal Haddad and Ella Tovim Gadasi, say they were keeping the Sabbath at their homes in the farming community of Mashen near Ashkelon when Hamas attacked. We hear the rockets, unstoppable rockets for the first time. Because we don't have a shelter, we cover our kids, me and my husband, uh, on the ground and say all the time Tehillim from Tehillim. Psalms. Yes, all the time. We are so scared, you know, I couldn't breathe. I felt that I can't breathe for, for the first time. It was an awful week for us in Mashen. Uh, most of the time we spent at the shelters and it was forbidden to go out. We felt unsecured, we felt unprotected. As a parent, we felt like we cannot protect, protect our children. If, uh, if a terrorist will come, I have nothing that I can do. David Nekrutman of Isaiah Projects says they hope to restore a sense of security to these people. We said we're going to adopt a community. With my friends, and after 23 years of working with different organizations involved in Jewish-Christian relations over the years, everyone came together and saying, we're, we're, we're standing behind you, David. Nine days after the beginning of the war, Nekrutman and other ministries helped evacuate Moshav Mashen to Jerusalem. We evacuated nearly 50 families from a community that was near the Gaza border because of missile attacks from Gaza into the Israeli communities on the southern border. We felt it was our responsibility of pooling resources between Jews and Christians together. So we have a whole bunch of ministries working together to make this happen here in Jerusalem. We didn't hear the rockets, we didn't hear the missiles, and we were very, very calm to be here, so we feel safe. You know, for the first time, we can breathe, finally. And our baby don't have to walk up in the middle of the night crying. Both Haddad and Gadassi expressed their gratitude for the rescue. We want to thank the Christian, okay, who gave us the donation, which is incredible for me, that they care about us. I'm surprised to hear that it's, it's people not from Israel, it's American, and it's Christian American. And it made me think that when, when you truly care about someone, when you truly love someone, you doesn't care what his religious, where does he live. As a teenager, Haddad had to evacuate her home almost 20 years ago when Israel uprooted some 9,000 Israelis from communities in the Gaza Strip and northern West Bank as part of the 2005 disengagement. While Israeli and Palestinian leaders described that as a move toward peace, it instead led to Hamas winning control of the region 
followed by incessant fighting and now war. This situation, it's because we left our home, because we gave our land, the God land, to, to the Hamas, okay? For me, it's only f for the Hamas, okay? And I want to go back home. I want to feel safe. You know, in Gush Katif, I felt safe, safe. Now I don't feel safe. Nekrutman says while much of the world has condemned Israel and calls to free Palestine, he believes that means being free of Hamas and urges Christians to pray. I would say to our Christian brothers and sisters out there, if you're praying, pray for our enemies to turn their hearts to the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and then see the light and actually make real peace. Julie Stahl, CBN News, Jerusalem. Thank you, Julie. Well, tired of the polarizing political system, how a third-party effort is pitching a unified platform to try and win over American voters. No Labels, that's the name of a rising political movement planning to shake up the 2024 election. The group's objective is to move both parties away from extremist agendas and back towards the center. There's even talk of creating a third-party unity ticket if the choice comes down to a showdown between Biden and Trump. Chief political analyst David Brody has the story. Headlines are touting the potential impact of no labels as it lays the groundwork of a possible unity ticket in 2024. Civil rights leader Dr. Benjamin Chavis, an ordained minister and former CEO of the NAACP, is navigating political waters to support the centrist effort. The reason why I'm moving to the center with no labels is because I want to see further change. Mm. I want to see our nation do better. Mm. I want to see our nation open up more opportunities for all of God's people. No labels has been a Capitol Hill presence for years, supporting the House Problem Solvers Caucus. It's helped lead to bipartisan achievements like the recent infrastructure bill. As 2024 approaches, members believe Americans want a moderate, common-sense alternative and point to polling that shows nearly 60 percent of citizens would support a centrist presidential candidate. Critics push back on those numbers. I know 538, which is a political organization, some others have said, now the middle is actually not that big. The good news <laughs> is the middle is growing. The middle is expanding and it's intergenerational. Millennials, Generation Z, but also elders, middle-aged people. No matter how big or small, No Labels believes these voters really don't want to see another Trump-Biden rematch. What is it about that rematch that has No Labels concern exactly? I would like to see uh, President Biden move more to the center, mm -hmm. not to the left. And I, I would even like to see uh, former President uh, Trump mm -hmm. move more to the center. Mm -hmm. away from the extreme. So we, let's see what will happen. What I predict is mm -hmm. we're going to stir a national discussion about these issues. And they've got tens of millions of dollars to do just that. Right now, the priority is getting on the ballot in all 50 states. They're on a handful so far, about five, with more to come. Next spring, they will announce final plans at their convention in Dallas. We're going to discern whether or not uh, a unity ticket, that is a Republican and a Democrat or a Democrat and a Republican, have, if that ticket has a pathway to win the majority of the Electoral College votes. While they won't name names on that ticket, Monday in New Hampshire, centrist Democrat Joe Manchin headlines a kickoff event announcing their new common sense policy book for America. With former Maryland Republican Governor Larry Hogan also a no-labels guy, the group is triggering both political parties. You're getting fire from all sides, but the... But the oh, we're, getting, we're getting fire from uh, <laughs> uh, both sides of the aisle. Right. Right now, probably more fire uh, from the Democrats. Right. Uh, because they are nervous that somehow we would tip the balance... Over to uh, Trump. ...in favor of uh, former President Trump. Dr. Chavis's resume dates back to the 1960s as part of Dr. Martin Luther King's civil rights movement. When he made his I Have a Dream speech, it was undergirded by his faith in Jesus Christ as coming to heal, restore, and resurrect humanity from self-destruction. And I think that we need that today 
more than ever before. You think he would be a no labels guy? Today? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> Dr. Chavis also is convinced that in today's political atmosphere, we need to hate less and love more. We may disagree on some political, but you're not my enemy because we disagree on something political. And that was David Brody reporting. Thank you, David. Korean Christians crying out to God still ahead. The special prayer event that brought people from all over the world together to seek reunification for North and South Korea. Finally tonight, North and South Korea are two very different nations. Divided at the end of the war in 1953, Koreans have cried out to God to bring their people back together. As Chris Mitchell reports from South Korea, one church is planning a unique conference to see this dream come true. We came to this prayer house in the countryside to talk to a pastor who has a vision to bring Koreans, Israelis, and the nations together to pray for the reunification of Korea. Bringing together Jews and Gentiles to pray for North and South Korea to once again be one country is the goal of Zion Conference 23, reunification of Korea through the Holy Spirit. Pastor Jang leads the Songdo Yusarang Church. He believes that blessing Israel and bringing Jews and Gentiles together in repentance and prayer can be the first step in a journey to seeing the two nations come back together as one. The Jews and us, we have shared spiritual things. We thought that we should serve the people of Israel well in Korea, so we decided to invite them here and hold the Zion Conference in Korea. This is the first reason for the Zion Conference. Pastor Jang says prayer and turning from sin as a nation and individually is vital. To achieve the reunification of the two nations on the Korean Peninsula, it is necessary for the Korean people to first repent of their sins and the sins of the nation. I believe that when people of all ages, from children to the elderly, repent of their sins and the national idolatry and worship the Lord, a shift will occur. Pastor Jang sees the 70th anniversary of the 1953 armistice that ended the fighting between the two nations as a significant milestone and a biblical jubilee year for freedom and restoration. He expects the fulfillment of Matthew 4:16. The people living in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of the shadow of death, a light has dawned. When the fighting stopped, North and South Korea took different paths. Under liberal democracy, South Korea developed into one of the most prosperous countries on earth. Under one of the worst dictatorships in history, North Korea became a totalitarian regime. This nighttime satellite image from space shows the startling difference between the two countries, with the South flooded with bright lights and the North nearly completely swallowed up in darkness. It's why many North Korean defectors like Yeon Hee Shin want the world to know what's happening in her country. I want the world to know that because of one dictatorship, the whole country, the whole people in North Korea is suffering. Their human rights are violated and all of the people are being treated like animals. We can't even say a word, even though God gave us a mouth to speak. And we can only live on 10 percent of our labor and 90 percent the government takes away. The conference will bring the nations together in front of Seoul's City Hall. Over 100 organizations are coming together to pray and plan. We invited intercessors from over 30 countries to pray for the reunification of South Korea and North Korea. And we invited Israelis to a 10-day conference free of charge. The church, including its children, is getting ready to host representatives from Israel and the nations. I am praying and singing praises for the Zion Convention. I am wholeheartedly praising with this ukulele. I want presidents and pastors from all over the world to come to this Zion Convention. We pray for the unity of North and South Korea by the Holy Spirit, and I look forward to and dream of the day when Jew and Gentile will be one. God has chosen Korea to be a nation that prepares the way for Jesus' return in the end times, a nation used for the restoration of Israel. It is my hope that through the Zion Convention, Korea will be united and prepared as a nation to prepare the way for Jesus' return.
and that it will be used for the restoration of Israel. I am preparing prayers and heart music for the Zion Convention. I hope that through the Zion Convention, North and South Korea can praise as one. I would really appreciate it if people from other nations would pray and bless my country. Pastor Jang says many political efforts have failed to bring the two nations together. He believes the division transcends political solutions, and the key is the anointing of the Holy Spirit to bring down spiritual strongholds. We've come to realize that prayer is the only way to combat these spiritual battles and darkness that bind the Korean Peninsula. Because the evil spirit of Satan is holding the Korean Peninsula, there is no other way to unify it. Only when the prayers of God's children ascend to His throne will the entire spiritual system of division holding the Korean Peninsula crumble and the two nations will become one in the Holy Spirit. All chains will be broken in His presence. Unification will be accomplished by the hand of God and through the children of God. If Pastor Jang's vision comes to pass and the prayers of the saints answered, North Korea will be free and North and South will be one. Chris Mitchell, Seoul, South Korea. And that's going to do it for Faith Nation this evening. Thank you so much for joining us and have a great night.